Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Backyard Farm to Table. My name is Kelvin and today we are going to get planted some zucchini and squash. Now this year I decided that well you didn't have all that excellent luck with zucchini and squash last year but you've watched some videos, you have did some reading, you have did some studying and now you're ready. But the bed was all set, ready to go. We got finished with the cucumbers. I put in some more of the marigolds along with the green beans, which you see growing up in the back here. And I've got sunflowers already growing up. And I was like, okay, something's got to go here in the front. Go and research, figure out what you can put here. And then I went to Lowe's and they had the zucchini and the uh, yellow squash on sale for two dollars a pot can't beat that zucchini and yellow squash cost you almost two dollars a pound in the store so i figure since i'm on paleo my carbs come from primarily the vegetables i eat then i need as many of the vegetables that i eat to be growing back here on the farm and that way I can save some money and lose weight at the same time. So I've got this all set up. Most of the weeds are pulled down. I've got some little teeny tiny ones, but I'm not one who gets overly concerned with the tiny weeds. As they begin to grow up, I simply pull them out as deep down as I can and they're gone, no problems. So I've already amended this soil when I planted all of these items inside here. So I don't need to do that now. What I need to get done is because zucchini and squash will grow out as vines, I'm going to this year grow it vertically. Like I do the cucumbers, like I do the tomatoes back here, like I do the uh, sweet potato vines on the very end. Vertically, when you have a small space, is the best way to go if you want to grow something that grows big or is used to just being able to sprawl across the ground now when you buy them in the stores a lot of times when they're a little more mature you'll find them in the pots with the plastic cages around them and those are just fine it's just that sometimes for me it's a little more restrictive and it's hard for me to get around it and if it's growing really really good it just kind of overflows it and then i have a hard time getting it from around it in order to put a bigger structure up so this time around and i've learned a lot more things so i'm going to go ahead and put up the same structure i used when i did the cucumbers and grew them vertically and i'm going to use it for the zucchini and the squash so let's go ahead and get started bought these poles which are for fencing from Home Depot you can get them from any of your uh, garden supply places or home improvement stores and I'm going to use this as a supports now what this does unlike when I do the PVC uh, trellises is this allows me to be able to lift it out set it aside figure out where I'm going to put something else and then stake it right back down in the ground. It also has these handy little stakes right here. So it allows me to be able to push it down far enough so that the wind doesn't take hold of it because while we don't get a lot of cold, we are subject to uh, times of the year where we get really high winds and those things called tropical storms and even worse, hurricanes. So let's get started. I've got four of these which I'm gonna place. <laughs> Soil's pretty soft, so I can just kind of push them through. And I'm not building a house, so I'm not caring if they're in a perfectly straight line or if they're level, standing up, because I can already see now that they're not but that's okay the zucchini and the squash won't care they'll still grow up and everything will still be just fine well there we go let's 
spot that has some rock down there. All of my beds are built right on top of the existing sandy soil of the backyard and it's no more than about four inches deep and then you've got the sandy soil. But I've had no issues and I'm just going to leave it that way. Makes life simple, makes life easy. And in today's busy world, if something can be good for you and easy, why not do it? Why go through all the hassle and the struggle of getting that level? I like for my backyard garden to be functional, doesn't have to be pretty. Okay, let me get the fence, which is already cut from back when Cucumbers used to be in this bed. I'll be right back. So, attaching the fence is really easy. Home Depot, it's a nice green. Aw, everything matches. How lovely. And it just slips right into these little notches here. And there's a few of them. get concerned about the notches for setting it in place. Good. That one's set. Because the rest of it, what I do is I just take these handy dandy zip ties and I come along and I zip tie it in place. So you go right through the holes that are here on the pole, bring it around. Presto changeo is done. Go ahead and finish this up and we'll be right back. back these ends because I don't want to get stuck because then there's nobody to sue but myself. Because you know that's what we do, living here in the land of Uncle Sam and Auntie Sue. Yep, something goes wrong. It's not our fault. We want to get paid for it. We head to court. God bless America. All right, so I am going to take and cut off the excess on the zip ties. And as you see, still have a little bit of residue left over from the cucumber plant still on the fencing here. Just going to get rid of that. All right. So now got this up here. And I've gapped it off of the ground because the plant will grow initially here. When it begins to fall over the side here, that's when I'll take and start training the leaves and the stems to come up through the holes here in the fencing. And the good thing about with this type of fencing is that when you get something that's going to grow even higher and you want it to still go higher all you've got to do is take another post stick it behind there set it to where you've got two eye openings that are lined up stick some bolts through there some nuts on the other end and you can keep building this up higher and higher now i wouldn't get too high don't go crazy with it because then you need ladders and uh, it's a whole lot of work, a whole lot of safety issues involved there. So do it to a point that's very manageable for yourself. You know, when a garden starts to become a job, then that's when we don't want to do it anymore because ain't nobody got time for that, right? Okay, 
So now we've got the fence up, the posts are in, everything is cleared, it's been amended. We can now go ahead and put in the zucchini and the squash. So these are my two squash plants. And these are my two zucchini plants. Now, even though they're in these little small pots, what the people at Bonnie did was they don't go through the process of thinning, okay? So if it gets down to where there's only one left, hallelujah, the plant will sell and you're good to go. But in this case with the squash, there's three plants inside here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plants in this one little pot. And just from me touching this, this one here is already falling over. It's just hanging out by its roots. <coughs> same thing with the zucchini, multiple plants in the same pot, multiple. So, got choices. You can either take this right here, pull it out. Now, if you look, it's just starting to become root bound. So I'm gonna pull that away. Now, here's the choice. I can either take and whittle this down or I can just sit it in the ground and let mother nature decide who lives and who dies or I can try to break it apart. But I can't really tell like with when I planted the strawberries, if these will survive. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna plant it as is, this one next to three. And this is an eight foot bed. So I'm gonna plant these four at about two feet apart. Not exactly, again, I'm not measuring, but approximately, okay? Let's go ahead and put in a hole. And you want your hole to be at least as deep as the soil that was in the pot. Because this isn't one of those plants like tomatoes where you want to mound it up the actual uh, stems of the plant, allowing it to be sturdier and more roots to grow. So I've got that, I've taken out a little too much dirt, we backfill it a little bit. Normally, if this was the beginning of the season, I would take and put some fertilizer down inside there. But at this point, since the fertilizer is still pretty strong in this bed, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna burn up the roots. I have $2 invested in this. Go ahead and fill back in around the plant. Give it a nice firm pat down. And voila. Go ahead and do the same with the rest. Now this one here, I am just gonna go ahead, let's not waste time. Just gonna go ahead and pull it. So sorry and we move on, it means I still have 10, 10 plants coming up out of here. Let's see what survives and what doesn't. Now the big thing to worry about here in Florida with zucchini and squash, which was the problem I had before, was the pottery mildew. But that was also partly because I wasn't really paying attention and I wasn't checking up regularly. And so it got, had developed to the point where it overtook the whole entire plant before I got a chance to go ahead and treat it and they died. Again, the roots are very, very wound here but they're not really round around the bottom so i'm just going to tease them just a little bit just to get them to pull away some and then we'll stick them down inside the hole
Now for the zucchini, we'll do the same exact thing. Look at all of that. Those roots are really wound there. Perhaps that's why they were selling everything for $2 when normally these are $3.98. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a watering. And I'm not gonna worry about the leaves getting wet right now. We're in the middle of the day and it is the beginning of March. So for some of you, you haven't even began to think about planting in the ground yet. But here, we're already up to, at this hour of the day, 82 degrees. And we still have a couple of more degrees to go before the day is done. Also, it's not going to take a whole lot because this morning the whole sprinkler system was on to wet the yard down, give everybody a good drink. And I always saturate the soil that's in the pot of what I'm transplanting before I transplant just so it doesn't act like a wick and try to suck up as much water that it has to. It's already set. It's got some water around its roots. It's not going out, dying of thirst and trying to grab what's around there. All right, so that's it for right now for the zucchini and the squash. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know why you chose either one. Subscribe and I look forward to seeing you once again right back here on Backyard Farm to Table. Bye.